Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Well, one of my heroes is gone. You're listening to him, B.B. King. He died at age 89. I should be so talented as he, but this man kept going and going and going, performing into his 80s. A relentless touring schedule well into his 80s. And the beauty of B.B. King was not only the art, by the way, but he grew up a sharecropper's son, and uh, the government didn't help him learn how to play the guitar. There were no government lessons, no government guitars. No government teachers, no affirmative action. He was just a greatly talented man who turned out to be a great musician. And the government didn't have to help him. There's a story right there. Born in the Delta, sharecropper's son. Uh, Read his story. It's an amazing story. And it's a story for all of us, by the way. We can learn from it. Now, of course, you all want to talk about someone else, not B.B. King. You want to talk about George Staphylococcus, who is now as toxic as a bacterium. George Staphylococcus, too glib to fail. Be stolen before it leaves my breath. Guarantee you that before it leaves my breath, it will be on other shows. But you heard it here first because nobody can turn a phrase or a name faster than I, Michael Savage. So, you know, the George Staphylococcus story, who I'm, he's too glib to fail. They're not firing him. There's an embarrassment here, not only for him, of course, but did you ever think he was not a Democrat operative? Did you ever think that a goodly percentage of those in the media are Democrat operatives? With a few on the other side, by the way. I mean, if you look at, what's his name? The guy who looks like an SA officer with glasses on Fox News who worked for Bush. Bush's brain. Uh, Carl Rung, Carl Jung. What's his name? Carl Rove, Carl Rove. Carl Rove. Carl Rove, of course, is a, is a Republican political operative. All right, there's a difference. I get it. You know he's a political operative when he speaks. That's why, you know, that's why there's a scandal because George Staphylococcus didn't disclose he gave money to the Clintons. Now, the question is, what did he want for the money? Uh, What do I know? Access, who knows what he wanted? Uh, I don't know what he wanted, but I'm not going to get worked up over George Staphylococcus today like it's the most important story. Big deal. Big deal. You know he's going to go on. He's too glib to fail. ABC's not firing him. Who's the guy with the yellow uh, dyed hair on MSNBC who was always a Democrat operative? The one who felt a thrill, the, the guy who felt a thrill go up his leg when Obama became president. I, an embarrassment. Yeah, that guy, Chris, the drunk on, what, I know his name. I didn't want to mention his name, but I'm saying it's filled with hacks. The media is filled with hacks who are working for one party or the other. And by the way, while we're talking about George Staphylococcus and him giving money to the, to the Clinton library, I'm sorry, you know, look, how do you feel about talk show hosts who continuously have Republican candidates on in the form of Plagola? I mean, are they, did, should they disclose they're going to vote for that person? I, I felt uncomfortable about this for years. I even complained about it once. You notice I rarely have any guests on this show who are politicians, almost never. Did you notice that? There's a reason for it. The reason is, is that if I have a continuous stream of Republican uh, candidates on my show. How am I different than George uh, uh, Staphylococcus? And frankly, I think it's a violation of FCC rules, if you want to know the truth. I mean, if you have a stream, let's say you're a lib and you're on the media, in, in, in the medium, one of the mediums, whatever it may be, and you have Dems on all the time. Is that not a form of plugola? You're plugging a candidate for free. Shouldn't they pay for that time? Same on the other side of the aisle. So, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about a rotten system from the top to the bottom. And I think I've said all I want to say on it. Uh, There are many other stories I'm going to cover today, and it's open mic to mic. Friday, interestingly enough, 855-407-282. I'll repeat the number, 855-407-282. It's open mic to mic Friday. I have other stories. The stories of the week were great today, uh, this week. And uh, we can talk about them or something new. The uh, blues legend B.B. King is a great story, but here's something I think is more personal. The Amtrak engineer's online rants came out. 
Remember the one who drove the train at 106 miles an hour into the curve? Or you forgot it already. I heard the attention span of the average American now is three minutes, if that long. 30 seconds, rather. Yeah, 30 seconds is the, ne is the attention span of the Twitter generation. I think that's longer. I was told seven seconds, incidentally, is all the average young person can follow anything. If you say, Bobby, come here, that's all they can take in. That's why they don't remember what you tell them to do. Bobby, come here. And he's already uh, Twittering somewhere. Remember there was a crash a few days ago of a train where a lot of people died? And you remember the engineer was a, a certifiable, uh, we don't know what, a nut job, a whack job we figured. Well, it comes out today he was a nut job. He had online rants that I'll read to you. Oh, yeah. So here's another one I want to get to today. Fecal matter on plain tray tables, unwashed blankets, and 80 million bacteria on suitcases. The dirty secrets of air travel revealed. Cabin crew staff reveal what really goes on in seating areas. That airline cleaners often don't have time to thoroughly sanitize planes between journeys. And here's another one for you. Fecal matter is present on 26% of hands in the United Kingdom. Thank God I was banned. I don't know what the, what the percentage is in America. It could be 126%. I'm a hand washer. I am a, uh, what, they call that a neurosis, by the way, if you're a hand washer. It's actually a religion in my family. I was raised by my father. The minute he left his market, he would wash his hands. Came home, he took his shoes off, uh, which is sane, by the way, and then washed his hands. Wouldn't let me eat dinner unless I washed my hands with soap and water. I raised my children the same way. You know, I did a study on health once, and aside from all the other factors worldwide, not worldwide, is the issue. You know, the number one factor in health is hygiene. Hand washing alone could eliminate an awful lot of disease. I know it's like you laugh at it. In the America of today, I think it's considered like in the DSM, it's considered a mental disorder. If you wash your hands, they give you a pill for it to, to make sure you don't wash your hands and you're like an average American with dirty fecal matter on your fingernails. Uh, I wash my hands continuously. So parents often change babies' diapers on plain tray tables, it turns out. You know, did you know that? You know those little tables you pull down that you eat on? Uh, yeah. You may eat from the tray table on an aeroplane, but would you still do so if you knew the person sat there before you had changed their baby's diaper on it? And would you even think about how just how dirty your luggage is? Do you ever think about that? You, you schlep your luggage through a dirty, filthy, disgusting airport, then onto an airplane, touched by criminals and gangsters, rifling through it to see if they can find a gold coin in it. And then it, uh, you get it again, another roll down the cart, this, then you roll it, roll it. Then you get it home and put it on your bed to unpack it. Have you any idea what you're putting on your bed as you unpack it? The average person carries over 10 million bacteria on their hands. Oh, God. Now, I don't want to get carried away with this because the fact of the matter is uh, the body has a natural immune system that can usually fight off most bugs, but with the age of superbugs, uh-uh, you better be a little more careful than you are. How about that blanket you're snuggling up to? Ugh. Do you use blankets on an airplane that they give you in those plastic bags? I don't. I mean, perhaps there was someone with tuberculosis from, uh, from a foreign nation there before you, you laid your head on it. How do you know? Flight attendant Sarah Kegel says that in her airline's uh, economy class, freshly washed blankets and pillows are only supplied to the first flights of the day. How about the air airplane toilet? Ugh, I hate that. But what are you going to do on a five-hour flight? I don't know. I'm on pins and needles when I go in there. But it's, it's a cesspool. The lavatory is a microcosm of everything filthy on the planet. Ugh. The fifth hour into a flight uh, from Miami, forget about it. 855-407-282. By the way, people are calling now on the book uh, Countdown to Mecca with all sorts of reports that they can't get the book here, they can't get the book there. It's a great book. I may be, This is the last day I'm going to talk about it. It's not that I've given up on it. It's enough already. You want to buy it, buy it. You don't want to buy it, don't buy it. I hope you buy it. It's a great book. It's the last of the trilogy. It will be a collector's item. And for those of you who have abuse of power and uh, a time for war, this is it. It's the uh, trilogy. So play a little BB King. The phone number is 855-407-282. We will talk about filth on airplane. I want to ask you about airplane filth horror stories. Wait, before you play BB. Uh, airline filth horror stories. What's the dirtiest thing you've ever encountered on an airplane? Hold nothing back. Make believe we're in a bar somewhere and I asked you this across a beer. 
What is the filthiest thing you've ever seen on an airplane? Is George Staphylococcus too glib to fail? <laughs> that's a funny line. I mean, George Staphylococcus, you know that's going to stick. It's over now. I have a way with names. Sometimes I name a media person or a politician something, and that's it for the rest of their career. For example, I'll give you two examples. I better be careful here. There's a local host. I don't particularly dislike him. He once urinated in my hat when I was a local host. I think it was him. I'm not sure. I had a certain kind of uh, a hat from Australia that I was a signature hat of mine in the early days. He was very jealous of me because I was making waves and he was there for a long time. So I came into my little cubicle once and there was urine in it. I got very angry. So I named him Mr. Softy after that. And Mr. Softy failed in radio. You know, he's still around, schlepping around, wearing the same shirt he wore the first day of broadcast. But uh, the name Mr. Softy stuff w stuck with him. I mean, there are other names that I've made up that have never gone away. And I guarantee you that George Staphylococcus is it. You know it's not going to disappear from the, from the airwaves. Okay, let's, uh, what is this washing? Oh, they're calling about hand washing. What is that called? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember there was a joke. Are you a hand washer? They used to joke about guys who would wash their hands. Uh, you know, I could get into some pretty good details here about sex and hand washing if you'd like me to, but it's a family show. But if you're paying attention to me, let me make a recommendation. Before you have sex, uh, do wash your hands with soap and water. How's that? Notice I said before you have sex. Can you figure out why? Would it also follow that after you have sex, you should wash your hands? Does anyone not know basic hygiene in America today? No, they don't. They know nothing. WABC, Sarah, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hello? Sarah, you're, yeah, go ahead. Make your point. Fire away. Quick. So, this is a great setup call. Thanks, Jim, for screening her. See? And the other one going to try? Get, why don't you try to set me up today? Go ahead. Try to get me with setup calls. See if I care. Do you have any idea that I am too glib to fail? <laughs> uh, okay, let's try another one. WBAP in Dallas. John, let's see if you're more sincere than Sarah from uh, wherever you are. Go ahead, please. Well, the other morning when I saw the unfolding of the train crash in Philadelphia, I couldn't help but that, uh, think of that passage you read in your book by Saul, when he talked about how in his business, as soon as something, if he messed up and, and something went wrong, he was held accountable immediately, and, and you implied fatally, whereas this guy, this engineer, right or wrong, the first people that come out and spoke for him was his attorney, was the, the union, just as Saul said, these union people... Oh, oh, my character, the Jewish gangster, uh, uh, Saul, who says that as a gangster, if he screws up, that's it. Whereas the reason America's collapsing is because everyone's got protection through a union or a lawyer. No responsibility, right? I had immediately when I heard, the, when I heard of the, his attorney speaking that he didn't remember anything and he's going to speak, but not today, but he, he may talk later. He dummied him up like a gangster before the, uh, the House of Un-American Ac Activities Committee. Right away, the lawyer said the engineer remembers nothing. How could the guy remember nothing? He survived the crash and there's about eight to ten dead and 200 or more wounded. Injured, rather, for life. What, he doesn't remember how it happened? Saul would have been taken care of. Saul? Let me, let me read you, Saul. I'm going to read Saul. I gotta, no, I don't have a time. Uh, not me. It's the risk I like. Every day's a gamble, said Saul, the gangster. When I succeed, I make money. Those around me make money. But if I screw up, I'm a dead man. Those guys in the unions, they screw up. They got strength in numbers. Even when someone makes a mistake and people die because of that mistake, like an air traffic controller who takes a personal call when he should be watching planes, he's got an organization that insulates him, pads the fall. I got none of that. I'm rewarded for what I do or I have to answer for it. You too, Jack, you've got personal responsibility. What we're doing now is about personal responsibility. That used to be the American way. It was done during World War II when the government worked with the Italian gangsters to find who was sabotaging ships docked on the East River. And let me tell you something else, Hatfield. In 20 years, you're going to see the recruitment of white Aryan nation types by whites in gated communities to protect themselves from the armies of Obama's spawn. That's a monologue, page 23 of uh, Countdown to Mecca. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. 
the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. That's named Lucille. Remember that song, Lucille? Unbelievable. He named his Gibson Lucille. Lucille. It's too slow, the Lucille whole narrative. We don't have time. We're not stoned in a nightclub. I am sailing today. I'm sailing. It's Friday, number one. Number two, I just had a one and a half ounce espresso, Italian style, with a little piece of lemon peel. No one does that anymore. You know, you can't even, at Starbucks? Yeah, go ask Starbucks for lemon peel. They'll ask you to talk about race instead of giving you a lemon peel. They don't know about a lemon peel in black in, in, in an espresso, do they? I, I just had a wonderful one ounce espresso with a lemon peel. And I'm just sailing along on the Savage Nation. So I'm going to give you the news. Here's a nice little story to make your weekend, all you American, red-blooded Americans, Rock River Republicans. Here it comes. Girl Scouts welcome cross-dressing boys into their ranks. Isn't that nice? Now, that's very inclusive. The Girl Scouts of America is the latest organization to cave to pressure from the LGBTIQA lobby to extend membership to boys who identify as girls. How do you like that? I just can't believe this. Maybe they can have cross-dressing scouts instead of Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Why must they? Why can't you have cross-dressing scouts with a cross-dressing leader and special emblems and special uh, insignia and special badges and special merit badges which you can earn, like best makeup? Uh, I, I I can't figure it out. Best hair, best nails. Transgender boys wanting to join the Girl Scouts has come up. You know, we are a sick nation. This nation is sick. It's sick in the head. It's the sickest nation on the planet. You have, is it any wonder that phenomenal... Don't don't get me started because I'm about to really get angry. Is it any wonder that it's so... I better not say it. I can't do it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. I need a uh, news break. We got a real big piece of news here. Yeah. All right, big deal. Sonoff got the death penalty. All right, I can sleep better at night. How many years will the uh, liberal lawyers keep him alive? That's all. I said, gave him the death penalty. I don't even know who Sonoff is. When I first saw the name Sonoff, I said, Sonoff, you know, the Boston Marathon bomber? Sonoff, Sonoff. I started to say, wait a minute. There was a, guy, a very famous guy at NBC News named Sonoff. I said, oh, the real Russian name is Tsarinov. Tsar Nikolai. There's a dirty song that uh, goes to that if you're Russian that I learned as a young child. I can't sing it on the air. It has a nice beat to it. And it was uh, sung by the peasants in the little villages against the Tsar before uh, he was killed. But I don't want to sing you a song. You now have a shorter attention span than a goldfish, according to a new study. Microsoft did a study, okay? And your brain goes dead after eight seconds. You lose concentration after eight seconds, I swear to God. They surveyed 2,000 people and studied the brain activity, 112 others using EEGs. And Microsoft found that since the year 2000, or about when the mobile revolution began, the average attention span dropped from 12 seconds, oh, it was really long then, to eight seconds. Now, that's an amazing story. 77% of people aged 18 to 24 responded yes when they were asked, when nothing is occupying my attention, the first thing I do is reach for my phone, compared with only 10% of those over age 65. I thank God I grew up without a phone in my hand. I don't reach for a phone when I'm, when I'm uh, let's say when there's nothing attracting my attention. Uh, there is nature out there. I can go look at seagulls. I can go look at a cloud. I can <laughs> It's gone. Art is gone. Science is gone. Poetry is gone. Thought is gone. Philosophy is gone. You have a bunch of robots with little iPhones in their hands. WBAP in Dallas. Kurt, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, my friend? Uh, got down to Mech, a great book. Saul Minsky reminds me of a, uh, a friend of our family growing up. We weren't criminals, but he was, and he was like Saul, and he was a good guy. He, uh, he knew his wife was having an affair and smooching with a guy on a lookout point looking over Lake Erie. So he had his construction guys drop off a backhoe about a block away, and he got on it, started up, and went over there. And while they were smooching, he pushed him over the cliff. <laughs> the hell out of him! Come on, you made you made that up for your own novel. Nah, it's, it's just Saul Minsky brought back the memories. That guy was a great guy. What else? Come on, give me another Saul Minsky like uh, story. 
Well, the same guy, Angelo, last name not to be repeated in case he's still alive. He, uh, this is the first time I met him. I was at the airport, and my dad was running the place, and he said, you want to fly a guy to, uh, to Erie for the uh, 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 horse races? I go, absolutely. I was young. My flying career was just getting started. And he says, yeah, that 250 Comanche out there, you've flown it, right? And I go, I have. Oh, I was excited. So I took him to the races, and it was frightening. It was frightening, Doc. He was yelling at everybody over there, and he knew who the, which horse was going to win, and it was freaky. Oh, you were the pilot. Yeah, yeah. And I brought him back, and he left. And my dad said, how did it go? And I said, great. I go, who is that guy, Don Corleone? <laughs> so he could still be living somewhere? He might be. That's why I'm not going to say his last name. Are, are you still flying? Oh, yeah. well, I'm retired now. I made it all the way to left seat of a 747. So when I brought up the issue of dirty airplane uh, cabins and such, I bet it uh, struck a chord with you. Filth on airplanes, huh? Handy wipes you open up. We'd open oh. up five of those, and we'd scrub down the, uh, the yoke, the throttles, everything that you normally touch flying. Because the guys yeah. flying before you, they're clean guys, but they got germs on them. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about changing babies' uh, diapers on plane tray tables? Yeah, I don't eat my. Uh, I don't eat my. Yeah, how about a nice blanket on an airline? Or a nice pillow? Can I have a nice pillow that's not in a plastic wrapper? That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kurt, let me send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. Maybe you'll enjoy Saul Minsky. And he is a good character. I, uh, I liked inventing him. You know why I put Minsky in the, in the novel? Because it happens to be a fact of American history that during World War II, the Office of Naval Intelligence went to organized crime in New York to help them solve the problem of Germans who were sabotaging ships on the docks in New York City. And they knew exactly who to go to, which were the people who were controlling the docks. And they caught the German uh, agents who were sabotaging uh, our ships. You know, would it be that our government had the brains to go to the people who know how to find the, uh, let us say, sleeper cells in America who are doing sabotage in this country? We might be a healthier nation. Sometimes you have to reach across the aisle to people who you normally absolutely detest because they're criminals. And you may realize that the criminals can save the nation while the putzes who are in the intelligence service can't even save their own jobs. They're worried about LGBT-compliant in intelligence services. You hear this? Meanwhile, ISIS is on the move in the Middle East. They took, took another city with an armored bulldozer. Where'd they get the armored bulldozer? It's ours. They stole it. Well, we gave it to them. And what did Obama the putts do while the armored bulldozer was breaking down the citadel walls that they were taking the city in the Middle East? This schmuck was giving the atomic bomb to Iran and telling the Saudis not to worry about it because he could be trusted. You hear the country we're living in? That's all. You wonder why I get it. I get it. Look at the story. Girl Scouts welcome cross-dressing boys into their ranks. Since 2003, because of the sickness of the left, the Girl Scouts of America's enrollment has dropped over 1 million girls, 27% of its membership, because of its lurch to the paranoid, crazy, insane, perverted left. Last year, Pro-Life has launched a national cookie boycott after the Girl Scouts endorsed Wendy Davis, a pro-abortion candidate for governor of Texas. Believe me, there's still plenty of Christian parents who knew that the, the Scouts used to be a wholesome place until the vermin on the left got control of both organizations. A pox upon them. Cross-dressing boys into a Girl Scout. You hear this? Create a uh, cross-dressing uh, troop, that's all. And then they, I mean, can they sell their cookies? I don't know. I guess they could sell their cookies. It doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, or uh, AC, DC, or foot power. You can still sell your cookies if they're Girl Scout cookies. Cookie. It's on off death sentence. What else is in the news? Let's see. We did yesterday the uh, infrastructure. Uh, cop killer. Uh, military dog teams. Hawaii Dem takes on Obama. I don't know. Nah, not interested. Okay, let's take some calls on the Savage Nation. I don't know what stories I want to... Are you interested in the George Staphylococcus story? I am not. Oh, the Amtrak engineer's rants I found this morning. Very interesting. The Amtrak freak, freak job at the controls during Tuesday's deadly Philly derailment, whose train inexplicably... By the way, it's sped up before the curve. You see, this leads me to believe that we're going to find out it's another German airline job, incidentally. Already all of the, the alarm bells are going off in my head. The reason he dummied up, that the lawyer dummied him up, 
is because he doesn't want you to know what really happened. It sounds to me after you read these online rants, Mr. Bostian, and I'm guessing now, why would he speed the thing up before the, before the curve? Unless we have a German job here, like the German pilot. We're going to find that soon. Anyway, he complained about everything. I'm not going to read the rants to you. It's all about complaints. Complaining about the railroad, complaining about the NTSB, complaining about his job. In other words, uh, we got already a grievance job here. So how far do you want to go with this? What more do you need to know? You put your life in your hands. How do you really know? Like when I go on an airplane, which is very, very rarely, I still look into the uh, pilot's uh, compartment. I generally like, I'm, I'm biased, I'll be honest with you. I generally like to see white-haired pilots with blue eyes. That's my bias. I mean, I have friends who are not white-haired and blue-eyed, and some of them are not even men. But the fact of the matter is I tend to like ex-military pilots in, in a commercial airline, incidentally, or even on a private jet when I occasionally go. The first thing I do is look at the pilot and talk to him. I hope that they're in their, like, 50s and ex-airline or ex-military. It's the first thing I want to know. Not that young guys can't fly, but it's a little, you know, more reassuring, to be honest with you, to have an ex-military pilot, isn't it? In case he has to do some uh, maneuvers down there if your engine fa fails. Now, you're dead anyway. Engine fails in a jet. You're not living through that one. Just uh, do your prayers, and that's the end of it. And that's the story. You're not surviving. That's all. 45,000 feet. Okay, here we go. You ask for airline filth horror stories. You're going to grab this. You're not going to believe what you're going to hear. Here we go. WFNR in Virginia, Carol, go ahead, please. You're a flight attendant, I understand. I'm a retired flight attendant, Michael. Flew from 1963 to 1995, 31 years. So it's been a while, but I have a doozy for you. I was working first class from L.A. to DFW, midnight flight. Everybody in first class was asleep. I went back to help the gals in the back. When I came back, I came to my first class galley, pulled open the curtain, and there is one of my first-class passengers urinating into a box of peanuts that was on the floor. Now, they're individually wrapped, but I yelled at him, told him to get the hell out of my galley and go to the bathroom. He was drunk. He must have been drunk when he got on the airplane. Anyhow, he had to zip up, and he's oh. his way no, out. Today, he'd be arrested, wouldn't he, for that? He'd be, that's an immediate arrest. I saved everybody from the peanuts because of course... No, but I'm saying if a guy did that today, it's an immediate arrest, isn't it? Well, I would think so. Well, I got back at him. I dumped a box... Oh, wait, wait, please, madam. This is a family show. I don't want to hear what you did in a, with a box of peanuts. Oh, I, threw, I threw them away, except for a few bags that I put in his... No, box. you said you got even with him. Now, I don't know if I want to hear the story. It could be... Uh, you, you topped him? What'd you do? I put a few bags of those peanuts in his jacket pocket. <laughs> oh, you're bad. Wait a minute. So that le that begs the question of you mean you touch them? Well, I wash my hands after. Oh, I this whole thing is a mess. So in all your years of flying, truthfully, the, were there really, I mean, no one was really worried about bacteria, were they? No, no, no. But let me tell you else, I've had B.B. King on my flight. Okay. No. Oh, well, yeah, a long time ago. I bet he was a one. I bet he was a wonderful man, huh? He was lovely, very a gentleman. And yeah, I guarantee he was a little nicer than Charles Schumer on uh, on the shuttle from New York to uh, L.A. to D.C. Yeah, I could tell you about some people that were not very nice. Well, we don't have to spill the beans on him, but thank you. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca, giving him away to everyone who gets on the air. That's all. That's all. Take him away. Walk him away. Take away cocktails. WMAC uh, Radio. Dale, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, Doctor, I just have to talk to you. So I'm flying from New Orleans to Tampa, Florida. Got settled into my seat. All is going quite well. And uh, after uh, snacks and things are served, uh, I decide to get a magazine out of the little, you know, the little uh, flap there in front of the seat. So I reach in, and, uh, and I felt something that was strange. And, you know, because... <laughs> instinct you know just to grab it and i did and when i unfolded this tissue uh a full set of fresh dentures <laughs> that is disgusting what i mean you must have like you, it was like halloween yeah, what'd you do what'd you do let the dentures hit the floor no no so i called it so i left it so i called the stewardess over and i said hey i said I, you know somebody left some dentures here and she didn't seem a bit surprised so she said. So she goes back to the galley, comes back with gloves, hands me a glove, and tells me to just please remove them and pull the glove over the dentures, 
and hand them back to her. And so, naturally, I did not do that. And I said, well, what are you going to do with these dentures? She said, well, what do you think? They, they go back to lost and found. She said, oh, they'll come looking for them. And, mm. uh, and that, I thought she was going to shock you and tell you the pilot lost them. Listen, I'm telling you, it, uh, it, was, it was something to recover. I thought they were going to give you a free bag of peanuts for finding the pilot's dentures. <laughs> you can see the kind of mood I'm in. I mean, that, that Italian espresso is working its wonders through my brain. Yeah, that and an allergy pill, and I'm feeling better than I have in a week. <laughs> Stay in the line. Free copy of Countdown to Mecca goes out to you. Why shouldn't I have a good time? Why shouldn't I have a good time on radio? I'm not allowed to. I love when people say having a better time than I'm allowed to have. That's a line of mine from 1995, by the way. But the thing is, the people know when you're having a good time. That's the thing. They can hear it you know, in your joy and your voice. Once you have to tell them what a good time you're having, like I just did, they're not sure you are having a good time, but I really am, by the way. It's the coffee, incidentally. WABC, Max, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I just wanted to share um, part of an interview I heard with B.B. King. It shows you the difference in mentality and the gratitude. So he was being interviewed about his life early on, and he played in front of a white audience that he wasn't expecting. And they were all sitting on the floor, and he came out, he was introduced, and he says, anyway, they introduced him as uh, the chairman of the board, and he said, and they all got up, meaning they were sitting on the floor, they all got up and clapped, and he said, they had never seen me, they, but they, they had heard my music, and he said, what could I do? He says, so I played for 75 minutes, and he says, and I must tell you, he says, they got up four or five times during the session. Now, what was important about that, in the level of... The Do you know that George Bush, George H.W. Uh, Bush, uh, awarded him the National Medal of Arts? In 06, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from George W. Bush. So, it, it, you know, it doesn't take a Democrat to respect uh, an artist, uh, even if they're African-American, as you would think today. Okay. The beautiful what? thing about B.B. King is not only how talented he was, listen to this. He was born on a cotton plantation in, uh, in, in a small town in Mississippi, the son of sharecroppers. Did you hear this? Raised by his maternal grandmother because his mother left his father for another man. Okay, Very typical. You know, did you hear that a lot of kids today, they have no family. But it didn't stop him. Why? Listen to the key point. He sang in the gospel choir at Elkhorn Baptist Church in Kilmichael. And that's what saved B.B. King, the church. At the age of 12, he purchased his first guitar for 15 bucks. The government didn't give him a guitar and didn't give him lessons, and he didn't have a president screaming about racism. He just loved music, period. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, here's another story. The war on police goes on. Officer deaths surge amid hostile rhetoric and anti-cop climate started by Barack Obama. Eric Holder, Al Sharpton has been uh, dummied up, by the way. They dummied up that rat. Suddenly that little rat is no longer to be seen anywhere. Now the cops are dying as a result of his big f mouth, his filthy little mouth. They dummied him up and buried him somewhere. But cops are dying because of that rat. Okay, that's a story. I should stop here. Another one. Military press to design line of women-friendly combat boots. You hear this? We don't have enough money for bullets. They're going to design special boots now for the women. Well, that's the way it goes. I'm actually all for women in combat. If they want to die for the country, God bless them. When I look at the Russian military in World War II, they had millions of women. Some of them were snipers. They did great jobs. The Chinese have women in combat. God bless you if you want to die for America. Go to Tikrit for me. Do me a favor. I don't, I'll give you a pair of boots. I'll buy them for you. Go. Do me a favor. Go to Tikrit. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. A great American voice is gone. B.B. King, another, another world. Grew up uh, on a plantation, a sharecropper's son. And uh, because, you know, he had the church, he had life. He had a soul, and the soul found its expression through the guitar and music. And the rest is history. He didn't need the government. He didn't need Barack Obama bashing white people to become a guitarist. You see what I'm saying to you? Do you get it? That the negativity of the government was not necessary for this great musician to thrive? But all right, let's leave that alone. I don't even want to talk about it. The George Stephanopoulos, who I'm calling George Staphylococcus story, I say he's too glib to fail. They're not going to get rid of him. Next case. They're not getting rid of him. That's that simple. Did they get rid of O'Reilly with the last scandal? No. There's certain media figures that are going to be around no matter what happens. I'm a media figure. I'm still around. People have tried to shaft me and destroy me. They still do. The book is out, Countdown to Mecca. And the customer reviews on Amazon are really strong. They're nice. And the trolls are running already. The trolls are running with reviews. They don't even read the book. They put me down, calling me names. They don't even read the book. This is what happens. The left-wing trolls, they're jealous of my success. They're jealous of the genius that emanates from my mouth every day. They can't shine my shoes, by the way, most of them. But the people like me, that's all. Here's one. This was an excellent read. I highly recommend this book. You almost don't need caffeine because your adrenaline level will be up there. Walter Winslow writes, Dr. Savage is a great writer, and this book is a page burner. Uh, another one says, this is a new category for me, and I'm liking it, though. This is my first foray into conservative talk show host novels since it's new. I'm not even near finished. I'm used to self-help novels, so this is heavy for my mind, but it's clear to me it's worth it. It's stimulating my imagination. I appreciate the efforts that Mr. Savage makes on air and in the literary world. Here's another one. Very unpredictable and fast reading. Here's another one by Jen. A must read. Great book. Love all of Savage's books. Another one. Brilliance. Brilliant. Couldn't put it down. On and on. It's all there. Forget the trolls. They're everywhere. You know, anytime anyone who loves America puts anything out, the vermin put out attacks. And we're talking about my latest novel, Countdown to Mecca, which is the third in a trilogy in the last of its series. That's it. Now let's move on. KVOR, Sean, welcome to the Savage Nation. I thank you so much for taking my call. I just wanted to say I'm reading your book, Borrowed from a Friend. And it's so I'm not much of a book reader, but I can't put it down. You've got an imagination that just it's incredible. And then that's the first comment. And the second one is you, are, sir, are a credit to America. I haven't been here very long, but I hear, I hear what you're saying, and my God. Wait, 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 hold on now. I love your accent. I'm going to guess it wrong. Uh, it has to be Ireland or Scotland, right? Oh, I, of course. I, all the way from Ireland, yes. Now, I, I was immediately going to say Ireland, and I learned in school, always go with your first instinct. Well, the Irish have a history of tradition, uh, a literary tradition, so obviously you like uh, the written word. I love it. I love the Bible. That's yes. I don't, I don't blame you. It's the original fiction to some people, but the word of God to others. Well, let me send you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, my Irish friend, so you have your own copy. I wish I could sign him, but I can't. Uh, let's see. Let me read you a paragraph from it. Oh, here's another one. Everyone likes my character, Saul Minsky, the Jewish gangster. And him and, and Jack are in a car together, and they're having a little fun word games with each other. So Saul says something like, well, Jack uses a big word, obsequious and disingenuous. So Saul says, who's got the big, big vocabulary now? Jack snorted in return. Words are like cojones, he growled. I got him when I need him. Hell, I'll bet those functionaries have got a better health plan than you do. Saul the gangster says, my health plan's got six chambers, Saul chuckled. Hey, if I worried about my health, would I be in the business I'm in? <laughs> Come on. Even Robert likes that line. The big Mercedes was speeding and weaving towards Montgomery Street when a black SUV sped by as if Saul's car didn't exist. It only slowed when it got to the filbert steps in the shadow of Coy Tower. The, SUV pitch, the SUV's pitch black exterior and blacked out windows set off alarms in Jack's head. One look at Saul and the reporter could see the mobster's buzzers had been tripped as well. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where's the gun part? I want to read about the guns. So they jump out. Oh, he was looking. I can't find his guns. Oh, where's the thing about the guns? I can't find it. Oh, here it is. As Jack jumped out, he fervently wished he had access to the gun collection back at the boat where he lived. What he wouldn't have done for his Colt Combat Commander 45 or 6 hour 380 right now. As if reading his mind, Saul reached across the seat and tapped the glove compartment release. Inside were two narrow, polished pine wood boxes. Saul opened one and removed the six hour mosquito automatic with a custom suppressor. He nodded toward the other box. Jack grabbed it. Inside was a suppressed Ruger Mark II. Its silencer already installed in the barrel. Right tool for the right job, Saul grunted. It's good. I like guns. I like boats. I like alcohol. I like certain things, and I write about them. I like America. I write about America. I hate Islamists, so I turn them into the vermin that they are. In fact, a psychiatrist friend of mine just finished my first novel called Abuse of Power, and it ends when the Islamic terrorist is finally trapped on the top of the Golden Gate Bridge, and Jack gets to him just before something terrible was going to happen, and he knocks him off the towers of the Golden Gate Bridge into San Francisco Bay, and as the Muslim terrorist is careening toward the black waters below, the last line of the novel is, enjoy the virgins, A.H., my psychiatrist friend really liked that. He said it gave him a kick. I said it would make for a nice movie. If we had patriots in the film business that we once had, that would have been a film two years ago. But since it doesn't cover LGBT safe uh, issues, uh, they won't touch it in Hollywood. It's that simple. You know how sick Hollywood's getting? That great TV series where uh, it's about a soldier who comes back and he runs for Congress and he's a secret Muslim. What's the name of that series, Robert? Uh, I, I keep forgetting it. What's the name? Even Obama watches it. I wonder why. Homeland. homeland, Homeland, Homeland. They've gotten so much heat from the Muslims within that they're turning the new villains into white uh, Aryan nation types. Muslims are no longer about to be villain, allowed to be villains. Even though the acts of terrorism continue setting people uh, on fire while they're alive, raping children, enslaving women. No. No, no, it has to be the white male. It has to be the new, the new enemy to Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg. That's all. I didn't want to get political, that's all, but I did. Here I am. 855-400-7282. Uh, oh, here's a, a, an airline dirt horror story from a pilot. Bill, KSFO, thanks for calling. You're a pilot. What kind of plane? Uh, Airbus 330. Big plane, beautiful plane. So what's the worst filth story <laughs> that you've ever seen? Well, I have a few, but... Uh... One time I was I was flying from uh, all San Francisco to Tokyo, and uh, I would make an attempt every hour or so to, when I'd get up to go use the head, I'd take a lap around up one aisle and down the other. i kind of like to see who's on the airplane and also, uh, you know, prevent my... Yeah, to prevent the flab... Yeah, you want to prevent phlebitis, I get it. <laughs> yeah, anyway... Uh, airplane is reasonably full. There's uh, lots of Asians on it. Uh, <clears throat> the meal service is going on. People are sitting there eating. And I come up the, the right side aisle heading back towards the flight deck. And uh, here's a guy, uh, an older Asian gentleman. He's made himself quite comfortable. He's uh, sitting there in his shorts and his, his wife beater T-shirt. His suit is draped over the seat in front of him. He has a pair of nail clippers, and he's sitting there clipping his toenail. <laughs> he was in his underwear clipping his toenails on the plane? Yes, sir. And, and wait, is that illegal? I mean, I, did, were you able to say anything to him? That could be a cultural thing. You never know. you got to be careful today. Well, this has been years ago. but uh, Yeah, but today, if you came upon an Asian, let's say, in his underwear, clipping his toenails as a pilot, you'd probably be intimidated. You probably couldn't even say anything for fear you'd be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the world the world is upside down. You'd have to check a manual somewhere, like page 3025, to find out if there's a country in Asia where clipping your toenails in your underwear on a commercial flight is considered a cultural uh, expression of some kind. Well, I think he was uh, just making him comfortable. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me send you something to read uh, the next time you're laid over in Tokyo. Countdown to Mecca by Michael <laughs> Savage. <laughs> no one can do anything anymore. Look what the left and the lawyers have done to us. All right, a few more calls. We're having a little fun. 
Al on WABC, give us the worst horror dirt story from an airplane. Well, it's funny you mention the guy with the toenails, but uh, the most disgusting thing I see is people, even the fancy guys that wear you know, shoes with no socks, you get on a plane on a long flight, they take their shoes off. And where do they go? They go to the bathroom. And Are they stupid? They don't realize they're stepping in bacteria with their feet? Did you ever go into the bathroom with your shoes oh, on? Oh, please stop. It's a family show. I wear galoshes myself. I, I know. It's disgusting. And you see these fancy guys, these Palm Beach guys, going in barefoot to take their shoes off. Oh, the style, the no sock style. Yeah, yeah, the loafer style. It's unbelievable. I, it's, like you say, I see it. I can't believe it. And I, like you say, it's like gross. It's just gross. You don't know what to do. I throw my shoes out when I get off a, a plane. I get them, I throw the shoes in the garbage. No, you got it. You got to take your life in your hand today, wherever you go. It's not just an uh, airplane, but when the story comes out on the amount of dirt they're finding, fecal matter on the on the on the tray table, unwashed blankets and pillows. But I look, I haven't accepted a pillow or a blanket on a plane unless they're sanitized for years. I mean, who would, right? I know the bacteria on it is just unbelievable. And don't ever drink the water on a plane. They never clean the tanks out. That's the one thing. Oh, now, are you in the airline business? Well, I'm associated with it, so I can tell you horror stories, but just don't drink. So you're, in other words, you're a hijacker. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I wouldn't. Well, what, what water on a plane? Where? From where? Where do they get the water? They don't, no, I was just on a plane. They have water in a bottle. It's, uh, it's not from a tank. They're, they're bringing bottles of water on now. I don't think they serve you from a tank, do they? The coffee. Where do they make the coffee? Where oh, the- you're right. The coffee water. Oh, my God. Well, no wonder I stick to booze. I mean, uh, vodka's got, it, got its, uh, its pluses. Believe me, one of them is there's no bacteria in it. I got news for you. I know a lot of students, they take actually the vodka and they wash their hands with it. It's uses a disinfectant when they're on the What a waste. What a waste. My God, that's disgusting. I No, I was on a plane recently, and they have a high, uh, high-grade vodka now they give out as, a, as, a, you know, like, as, your, as your general vodka. All right, I'm giving you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. We got news, views, reviews coming up. Latest news, you know what it is. Sarnoff, uh, death sentence, big deal. Found guilty. You know he's not going to. You know, till the lawyers from Harvard get through with him, he'll be there 30 years, you'll see him with gray hair. Sarnoff sentenced to death at Boston Marathon bombing. Okay, big deal. Big deal. This kid, I guarantee you, you'll see him with gray hair in the jail cell, reading the Quran, telling you to drop dead 30 years from now. After the uh, the lawyers from Harvard get through defending him, yeah, Allahu Akbar to you, Sarnov. Why don't they give him the? Uh, no, I can't say it. It's a family show. You know he's going to live very well in prison. He's going to get six ethnic meals a day, prayer rug, uh, visits from an imam from the local mosque. Yeah, F- flashback. The mother said Americans can burn in hell. What a mother he had. Father moans, hangs up on phone interview upon learning fate. What a parent! What a set of parents this kid had. Zokar Zonov sentenced to death for marathon bombing. What'd you expect? Well, in Boston, I'm surprised they didn't offer him a job at the uh, at Harvard University in the poli sci department or in the ethnic studies department. I mean, actually, this is a good thing. The way the world is today, especially in in liberal Boston, they could have offered him a tenure job somewhere, maybe working for uh, one of the left wing groups. Zonov's face. Uh, He'll be around 30, 40 years. I guarantee you. The 12-member jury had to be unanimous for Tsarnov to get the death penalties. Tsarnov's father, Anzor Tsarnov, reached by phone by the AP in the Russian region of Dagestan, let out a deep moan upon hearing the news and hung up. Three people were killed and more than 260 wounded when the two pressure cooker bombs. Pressure cooker bombs. My mother used to cook with a pressure cooker. To this day, I, I got to remember now. It's like remembrances of things past. Instead of the petite Madeleine, I remember the pressure cooker. I mean, if you, re- you know what I'm saying, it's a literary reference, went over 99.9% of the people's heads, but those who got it are laughing right now. They have to hold their guts. When I saw the word pressure cooker in this story, this was very much like Proust's Petite Madeleines, which bring back a whole slew of memories, right? If you know a literary reference. So for me, Savage, the pressure cooker is like the Petite Madeleine to Proust. And the pressure cooker to me, when my mother would make a beef stew in a pressure cooker in that kitchen in the Bronx, I usually went to another room. I expected an explosion any minute. She wasn't a terrorist. She was making my father a beef stew in a pressure cooker. I used to watch the meter on the top of that thing. I was always afraid it was going like, to explode any second. Do they still sell a pressure cooker? I never understood. The, I used to ask her, what's a pressure cooker? What is that about? 
there's gas underneath the pot, then there's a top, and you and the air comes out, and the pressure goes, in, and the pressure adds, and it cooks faster. Great. Meanwhile, you put your entire family at risk. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Our time is speeding by, an hour and a half for radio. I feel like I'm in here five minutes. So look, any topic today, it doesn't have to be what I brought up. It could be anything, not just pressure cookers and Sonov. Uh, there could be the book, the this, the that, 855-407-282. I, I was right. I told you you'll see him as a gray-haired man cursing America for 30 years because of the vermin in the, in the legal profession who are against the death penalty. They're for abortion. They believe in euthanasia, but not for vermin like this. You hear this? Can anyone explain liberalism to me in a rational manner? And I mean doctrinaire liberalism, not nice people who are good people who just want good for others. I'm talking about doctrinaire psychotics who believe in abortion and euthanasia, but will work around the clock to keep a vermin like this, Sonov, from getting a death, the death penalty. Few federal inmates on death row have been actually put to death. That's all. Oh, yeah, I'm, gr I'm glad he got the death penalty. He'll be alive 30, 40 years, you'll see. A gray-haired man like, like Lecter. And with the Quran there and the cage with, a, uh, with an imam coming every three days and special meals. So how many were killed quickly? Timothy McVeigh. They knocked him off right away Why he had secrets. Timothy McVeigh's dead. Oklahoma City bombing. How come the uh, Harvard didn't keep him alive? Because he knew too much in plain English. The same reason Saddam Hussein was killed immediately. The same re reason that Muhammad Gaddafi was killed immediately. They knew too much. You get it? Zarnoff doesn't know anything. He'll be alive for 50 years. That's so. He might be president one day. In this Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, whatever. Does anyone like this stuff? Or am, I the, am I the only one left who, who like likes this music? What was the other one I picked, Robert, that I said before the break play on Rock and Roll Friday? Incidentally, we're open for business here. Uh, not just airline filled horror stories or uh, George uh, Staphylococcus, whatever you want to talk about. You're going to hear George Staphylococcus before, before it leaves my breath already. It's on someone's blog. Oh, he gave a, an apology. Let's, while you're looking for the other song, play clip one. Go ahead. Let's, here's George uh, Staphylococcus apologizing today. Now I want to address some news you may have seen about me. Over the last several years, I've made substantial donations to dozens of charities, including the Clinton Global Foundation. Those donations were a matter of public record, but I should have made additional disclosures on air when we covered the foundation. And I now believe that directing personal donations to that foundation was a mistake. Turn the Even pretty boy off. All right, turn the pretty boy off. Can anyone play a horn like this anymore? Well, their brains are so warped from racism thinking about racism, avoiding racism, planning racism, trying to avoid racism, thinking about how racist everyone is in the audience, that no one can play a horn anymore. You hear that? How he, wait, stop. Did you hear what that man just did with that saxophone? I guess if you're a musician, you understand what he was doing. Backstopping it, forward stopping it. Only a musician could understand what I'm saying to you. I do the same thing in talk radio that he did with that saxophone, incidentally, which is I'm very musical. My voice is very musical. And I am very musical today because I'm flying on a, a triple espresso with a sliver of, of lemon in it. And uh, my allergies have abated because I finally, I finally broke down and took an allergy pill. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I don't know why it's working so well. I feel good. It has a slight antidepressive quality to it. It could be because it's the first time I've been able to breathe in 15 years. I actually know what it's like to breathe through two nostrils in the year 2015, the first time in 15 years that I can actually breathe. No wonder I feel happy. I was gagging for air. I had no idea I was gagging. All right, welcome back to the program. It's really amazing, uh, modern medicine. Finally caught up with it. Uh, I, I don't offer any other solution. I've tried quercetin, vitamin C, bioflavonoids, hyoflavonoids, myoflavonoids, euroflavonoids, his flavonoid, my flavonoid, your flavonoid. And I had to go to a medical pill in order to get relief, <laughs> frankly. So I'm a hybrid in that regard. I believe in uh, Western medicine combined with alternative medicine, combined with homeopathy, combined with herbal medicine, combined with the three V's, which is, uh, frankly, it works every time. 
The three V's work better than anything, which is uh, vitamins, vodka, and vitriol. I may package it one day as Dr. Savage's 3V formula. I, I don't know how to combine the vitamins yet with the vodka, but I'm working on that. I, I don't know if I could put vitriol in a pill. I'm working on that part. I, I can combine vitamins and vodka in a, in a, in a uh, liquid solution, but I don't know how to put vitriol in it unless I use... Unless I put uh, uh, Barack Obama or Al Sharpton's voice in a capsule, then I could combine some vitriol. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, look at this. Mike on WLYV Radio in Indiana is calling you. Mike, what's on your mind, Mike? Hey, Michael. I really enjoyed the book. Um, I'm about in Chapter 5 by now, and I love the character Saul. And I just, the book just reminds me of that TV show 24. I just can't stop. Wait, wait, this is interesting. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, so it's a great compliment because the TV show 24 was great in its early days. Countdown to Mecca is what he's talking about, my new novel. And the TV show 24 was good in the beginning when they were able to target Islamists as the enemy, right? Then they, they modified it and killed the show, right? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Everybody got uh, caponized along the way by the powers that be. And they weren't even allowed to call a terrorist a terrorist like our president. Well, I'm glad that you liked it, and I did love 24 in the early days. It was fantastic, and I do like the new character, Saul Minsky. He seems to be a big hit, Saul. I may have to do something with Saul Minsky rather than Jack Hatfield. Everyone seems to like him better than anybody. Did you like the, uh, the clown in the book? Yeah, it's just a great book. I love it. What do, you think about the what do you think about the Russian hooker, Anastasia? Oh, she's good, too. She kind of reminds me of the uh, character from 24, um, was it Nina? Wow. I, I don't remember Nina, but my line about her where she had the eyes of an Arctic wolf, I think that's original to literature. Is it good? That's a good line. Plant in the uh, at CPU. Yeah, but I like the... I, no, I'm talking about how I wrote about her. I said she had the eyes of an Arctic wolf. I think that's fantastic, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just my books. Of course I'm going to like it. All right. Thanks, my friend. KBET Radio, Las Vegas. Los Wages, Nevada. Peter, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, a positive book report. My local Barnes & Noble, I strolled in on Monday, and they had 10 of your books there. And then I just went in yesterday, they were down to two. and they're so, where? so I have eight fans in Las Vegas. <laughs> that was good to know. Uh, they actually had them on the front table, the entry table. It wasn't the most prominent thing uh, uh, book, but it was like listed with the new arrivals. Right, right. That's where BNN is putting them on the round table with the new arrivals. That's where they're going. I hope that uh, uh, the two moguls there in the city get a copy. Uh, I hope Steve Wynn reads Countdown to Mecca, and I hope that Saul, M M Mr. Adelson gets a copy. I must admit I was somewhat surprised because their uh, curator there had the uh, purple and pink hair and the lip gear and the eyebrow pins and stuff. But that, she was very pleasant and said, well, it looks like it's selling, so we should be ordering up some more. And I have a couple comments. No, a lot of the freaks are very nice, actually. I, I found a lot of freaks to be very nice underneath all of the exterior uh, accoutrements, the, 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 the eyebrow thing and the, the hair. The, underneath, it's a human being who wants to get through life. That's their, that's their costume, you know what I'm saying? And then a couple comments on positive on B.B. King, and that was, one of the quirks that he had was whenever he would sing and vocalize, he would stop strumming his guitar. But when he'd strum his guitar, he wouldn't sing. And some more competitive uh, artists said, well, that's a detriment. You know, I can't. No, I actually saw him a couple times. I'm 60 and grew up in the 60s, the hate era, hate Ashbury era, and all the shows in San Francisco at Phil Graham's. Uh, oh, you come from the old days of the, uh, of the underarm hair and patchouli oil. Oh, yeah, and I, in fact, one of my high school chums was Neil Sean from Journey. But uh, aside that, I saw B.B. King a couple of times. No, he, he's one of my heroes for a couple of reasons. Great voice, his story growing up as a sharecropper son, no government aid, became a great musician without it. Uh, didn't think that white people were out to get him. You know the whole story, Peter, but his, mu his music is what drew me to him. Way before this whole racism crap was thrown in our faces by Obama, I was a fan of many, many musicians, including B.B. King. Thank now, you for the call. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, and I brought you into a land of fruitful fields to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. Read your Jeremiah. You'll see why God is pissed off at man. Whereas once we turned away from the church and from God, 
God abandoned us and he said, you don't like me? I'm not good enough for you? You don't like what I've given you? You don't like the land of milk and honey? Good, a pox upon you, I'll show you what's coming. And if you think there's no direct relationship between the loss of a connection to, let's say, if you, even, even if you wanna say God is a universal truth or a universal power, once this nation turned from that universal truth or that universal power, which some define as God, the nation started to implode. That is one way to look at the degenerate plant that we have become, which is another phrase from Jeremiah, the degenerate plant, which is 221 for those of you who read, and it goes like this. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For though thou wash thee with nitre and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith, saith the Lord God. How can you say I am not defiled? I have not gone after the Baalim. See thy way into the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift young camel traversing a ways. And, and, and on and on and on. So if you think that the degeneracy of America today is something unique to mankind, you are mistaken. It happened in ancient Israel, and as a result, the nation fell. And so if you think that this nation can still be saved, you may be right, but it can only be saved by a resurgence of religion, in my opinion. Only religion can save America. I know how far afield that sounds. I've been a little off the wall. I've been having my fun. And you think I'm a wild, crazy guy who doesn't believe in anything. But the fact of the matter is I do very much, and I know very much about the fact that without he up there, my friends, I wouldn't be down here in front of you on this microphone. I'm going to take a break. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What a road this has been. My God, what a week. One of the roughest weeks of my life is coming to an end, thank God. Not only did I have to launch the new book and get you to go out and look at it, and many of you have, and you love it. Thank you. I'm finishing another nonfiction book. I am. I am killing myself with the scholarships, which have, have to be announced by July 4th. I have about five other major projects going on and a daily show, and I'm struggling with allergies and a few other minor ailments. I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm alive, so this is what, things, this is what you do when you're alive. I mean, I, I took it on. No one asked me to take these things on. I could just be golfing and sleeping and drinking and eating like the average white guy over 50 who works all his life. God bless him. That's what he wants. I don't understand that. I never understood working for retirement. I don't get it. You know, success is a stale finale. You know who wrote that? Uh, I forget already. It used to be a, one of my favorite quotes. Oh, Eugene O'Neill in Long Day's Journey in Tonight. He wrote, success is a stale finale. Only the struggle is the success. I, I've never forgotten that. I learned that when I was 19, 20, and reading all of the great American writers. And I stumbled upon Eugene O'Neill, and I never forgot that one. Success is a stale finale, which is true. Ask anybody, why do you think uh, anyone who's creative is onto the next project while you just discovered the one they, they produced, let's say, three days, three months ago, or whatever? Whether it be a movie, or a book, or a, a song, they're not sitting there on their laurels saying, I wrote that song in 1951, or referring to something they did in 1995. They're on to the next thing because success is a stale finale. Or you could put it another way, which is like a Rolling Stone gathers no more. So if you want to put it in another homily, you know, a simplistic statement, you have to keep moving forward in life. You know, in life, either you're moving forward or you're dead. There's no such thing as sitting still. I don't believe you can just sit still. Either you're moving forward or you're dead in the water. It's like a boat itself. And once you're dead in the water and be calmed, I mean, what kind of life is that? So it's a long way of saying thank you very much because without the radio audience, None of this would have happened, to be frank with you. I started out as a uh, really a poet, natural uh, naturalist poet. There's no audience for that kind of stuff. It's all marginal. And I wrote for years in the field of health. I had quite a successful career as a writer of uh, books of uh, health and nutrition and stuff. And these books are considered classics by people with brains who realized I was 30, 40 years ahead of my time with many of them. I don't, see the, I don't see the telling you about them. They're out there for people to read. And the people who are jealous of me mock that as if writing about nutrition and vitamins was something bad. 
That's the little people, the Lilliputians that do a thing like that. And uh, I've done other things, so I keep trying to move forward. But this eventually all clocks, the pendulum moves to the center, and uh, it doesn't want to swing left or right anymore. You know, I see an old man, a nice old man across the street from me. I moved into this neighborhood 10 years ago. He was an elderly gentleman when I moved in. He was retired, a nice old German gentleman, very nice man. We would say hello, I don't know him personally. And I see him in the street now, he must be in his 90s, moving more slowly, getting more gaunt. And I look at him and I say to myself, hey, if you're lucky, that's what you'll look like. <laughs> that's what you're going to look like. So that's what you got to look forward to. What do you think? You're going to live healthfully and happily till 120 like the age of most? No one does. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm not coming to any conclusion. I'm just thanking you for being my loyal audience and for making this radio show what it is. And it's been quite a road, by the way, with a lot of ups and downs. And I have been down a number of times, and I've come back up again. And uh, as they say, like a phoenix, I rise from the ashes. But it goes back to what I said to you before the break. Without him, without God, I wouldn't be here at all. And anyone who doesn't understand that, you're really missing something. Because that energy, that eternal energy that has catapulted mankind from the Stone Age to the present is what can save this country. Nothing else can save us. And this is my way of saying to God, thank you for everything on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, as we cruise into our number three, the Boston Marathon bomber Tsarnoff was sentenced to death. That's the good news. But you know and I know the psycho liberals are going to keep him alive for 50 years. He'll be an old gray-haired man. You'll be long dead before this guy is ever executed. We live in a sick nation, and it's getting sicker because what I'm about to play for you will prove beyond a reasonable doubt how sick the country is. Here is the U.S. attorney for Massachusetts, Carmen Ortiz, who was nominated by none other than President Barack Obama as the United States Attorney for the District of Massachusetts. We're told she's the first Hispanic and the first woman to represent Massachusetts as U.S. Attorney. But listen to the twisted propaganda right after the announcement that he was given the death penalty. The trial of this case has showcased an important American ideal that even the worst of the worst deserve a fair trial oh, and due boy. process of law. Today, genius. the jury has spoken, and Joe Harsanayev will pay with his life for his crimes. Make no mistake, the defendant claimed to be acting on behalf of all Muslims. This was not a religious crime. How do you and know? And it certainly does not reflect true Muslim beliefs. Oh, please, get out of here. You stink to high heaven. All. Hey, Carmen, go back to Adelphi University and restudy your PC manual. Are you kidding me? Here's a guy who said he did it in the name of Islam. His brother did it in the name of Islam. His mother said they did it in the name of Islam. And this low-grade, low-brow idiot appointed by Obama simply because she's a woman and Hispanic tells us, uh, no, he didn't do it because he's a Muslim. Why must they do this? Why must the propaganda ministry put this out every time a Muslim is caught killing somebody? We have to listen to this crap. The president himself is a nut like this who says that they're not Islamic. Well, ask them if they're Islamic or not. They'll be happy to tell you they are. I am outraged by this. No, Carmen Ortiz, you're showing once again what an embarrassment affirmative action really is. Period. End of story. I stick by those words. Let's go to the callers. Eric on WJR. Agree or disagree? This is an outrage. Well, yeah, my, it's, um, it's pretty ridiculous. I think um, I was going to answer the question as far as... Uh, why the liberals defend this guy is basically that they see people only as lucky and unlucky. So in their mind, the criminals um, that are captured and convicted are just unlucky and a uh, product of their circumstance, and that's it. Yeah, but he's not a Muslim, according to the prosecutor. Well, right. He can't, well, yeah, but I mean, if he was a Muslim, then... The liberals' mind is so warped that 
if a person says they're a Muslim and they did this in the name of Allah, they say he's not a real Muslim. How can they know that? How can they know what's in his heart? What, are they capable of looking inside his heart and saying he really isn't a Muslim? What was he? A Christian, a Jew, a Hindu, a Buddhist, or an agnostic? What was he? He said he was a Muslim. So what are they telling us he's not a Muslim? Well, they don't want him act. They don't want him to be acting on his Muslim faith because then that's going to ostracize all Muslims, and that would just yeah. Well, I got news for you. The more they bend over backwards to tell us the obvious lie, the more we're going to understand what a lie it is. It's that simple. Thanks for the call. I'm sick of it. I'm just sick of it all. Now, the story from earlier is that George uh, Staphylococcus, uh, I said, is too glib to fail, and I'll stick to that. They're not firing him. That's my guess. I don't know what they'll do, but my guess is even though he gave money to the Clinton Foundation and then he hammered the author of the book exposing the Clinton Foundation and he didn't disclose a full truth in his on-air apology, he's too glib to fail. Staphylococcus will survive it, but he's not the only one doing it, for God's sakes. Everyone in the media, you know, has got a connection to a party of one kind or another. It's that simple. 855-400-7282. Let's see what else is in the news. Sonov now. He's not dying. Boston Marathon bomber sentenced to death. I would say 30 to 40 years you'll be hearing about Sonoff. The very same liberals who are quick to say that a woman has a right to terminate an abortion at 12 weeks or 16 weeks or maybe even after the baby's born if it has the wrong color eyes uh, and they believe in euthanasia for 12-year-olds. Why then do they defend the worst people on the planet as though they're saints? Why? Answer. There's only one answer. Liberalism is a distortion of the optic chiasma. They see everything backwards. That's why the prosecutor will get up and say, even though he's obviously a Muslim, and he did it in the name of Allah, and his brother did, no, he's not a Muslim. All of a sudden, he's not a Muslim. She stole his religion from him. In a way, she's actually insulting him. I mean, give the guy the dignity of his religion, and give him the dignity of his crime, and give him the dignity of his death. He did it in the name of his religion. Don't tell us what he didn't say. He said he did it in the name of his religion. I'm outraged by it. I want you to listen to it again. This is not false outrage. This is real outrage. This shows you, this just shows you what affirmative action is doing to the legal profession, that Obama would choose a, you can listen to her rhetoric, and what you hear are the simplistic phrases of a Hallmark greeting card. A Hallmark greeting card would have more depth than this U.S. attorney. Listen to it again. The trial of this case has showcased an important American ideal ba, ba, that even ba, ba, the worst ba, ba. of the worst deserve da, a fair da, 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 trial da, 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 and due process of law. Today the jury has spoken and Joe Harsanayev will pay with his life for his crimes. She Make no sad. mistake, the defendant claimed to be acting on behalf of all Muslims. This was not a religious crime and it certainly does not reflect true Muslim beliefs. Yeah, all right, you it got the walking papers, the marching orders from Barack Obama. That's Carmen Ortiz nominated by Barack Hussein Obama as the U.S. Attorney for District of Mass. First Hispanic, first woman, yeah, hooray. She oversees the work of more than 200 attorneys. Can you believe this? This woman is in charge of 200 attorneys. What does that tell you about the legal profession? What does that tell you about the bench that Obama has established for the courts in this nation? If this is the best, and by the way, there are brilliant Hispanic attorneys. There are brilliant Hispanic women attorneys. There are brilliant Hispanic women judges, by the way, who are extremely fair. Uh, and I have an awful lot of experience with one, by the way, who judged my case and she was appointed by Obama, but she's a brilliant jurist. This one is a dummy in plain English. You can listen to her rhetoric and know she never was entitled to this kind of job. Unbelievable. FTL, Phil, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, I mean, I'm as aggravated and as upset and outraged as you are, Michael. This is just a nonstop barrage of nonsense. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's nonsense. What do you mean it's not in the name of mu Muslims? He claimed it was. Of course it is. We've been, they've been like, first of all, why is a public servant, why do they feel compelled to make this statement on behalf of a religion. What, what's, what is that all about? Okay? It's obvious what this is. There are a lot of, unfortunately, there are a lot of people, who, Muslims, who either be, believe that this is the way it is or who silently sympathize or something, and it's just outrageous. Outrageous. I feel the same way, Phil. It's disgusting. 
that as a, at a time like this, when America finally saw justice, and we're not going to see him executed, but at least we had the knowledge that this piece of human trash got the death sentence. She has to now steal from that and give us a, a phony lecture about that it's not in Islam, nothing to do with Muslims. It has everything to do with it. What do you mean nothing to do with it? It has everything to do with it. Now, the next thing that's really upsetting, it goes back to what happened in Texas. Um, nobody is showing the proper outrage or the proper reaction to this endless tippy-toeing around, uh, you know, the sensibilities of these poor people can't have a, a cartoon drawing of their, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah, I understand. Right, right. And that, of course, was not in the name of Islam either. In other words, those who kill people over a cartoon were not real Muslims. Those who were rape and kill children, not real Muslims. Those who uh, set people on fire, not real Muslims. Uh, those who uh, bomb a, a church, not real Muslims. Those who kill nuns, not real Muslims. Those who burn churches to the ground, not real Muslims. Uh, wherever you turn, not real. Who are the real Muslims then? Where are they? Let them speak already. Where, where are they? Where are they? I'm waiting for the real Muslims to speak out against it. I actually had a few of them on the show over the last few months. They have spoken out against these maniacs, incidentally, and they're all women. All right, Phil, I'm sending you a free copy of my novel, uh, Countdown to Mecca. We're not going to save the world. All we can do is be outraged by the insanity, by the way. She excuses Sonoff. Listen to, again, the double outrage. She excuses Sonoff uh, and says it's not real Islam. Did you hear the same from the Maryland prosecutor saying that these few cops, even if they're found guilty, do not represent all cops? Have you ever heard Obama say that although this policeman did this, he doesn't represent all policemen? You never hear that, do you? The liberal mind is a sick, polluted sewer of distortions and lies and self-hatred. And I'm Michael Savage, and I agree with this monologue, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I can see the hole in it. Hey, Dash Perry, hairy underarms, patchouli oil. I see the whole thing. I mean, so the whole city comes back to life. The most disgusting era in San Francisco's history comes right back up like a, an overflowing garbage can. Right now in the Haight-Ashbury of San Francisco, there's a McDonald's, right? So these hippies' descendants have turned it into a drug den. The worst, most disgusting area of the city is in the McDonald's, open drug trading. So what does the city do? They're attacking the owners of McDonald's, telling them to get the drug, the drug, drug trade under control, you hear? This dirty, degenerate, sick, psychotic, corrupt city tells McDonald's to clean out the drug addicts. Well, excuse me, isn't that the city's job? Isn't it the job of the corrupt mayor to clean the bums out of the McDonald's? Yes. So what's he attacking the business for? They, they're not trading in drugs. It's the sick degenerate selling in drugs at McDonald's in, in the hate ashbury Go back to the music. That's all. I have strong opinions. What do you want from me? It's the way I am. It's the way I'm wired. It's the way I'm made. It's the way I think. It's the way I talk. It's the way I walk. It's the way I see things. If you don't like it, go listen to NPR and Vivaldi music. If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road? Now, of course, she died of an OD or whatever. I'm not celebrating that. But we all know what that living for the impulse has led to. It's given us Barack Obama as president. A whole generation of old hippies think that if he feels good, he's a good president. If he looks good, he's a good president. If he cons you with his mellifluous voice, he's a good president. The world is burning. The world is collapsing. ISIS is taking one city after another. We got ISIS in every, every state of the Union, and they're marching around like it's the 1960s, and they're blowing bubbles in the air. That's all. What do you want me to do? Now Sonoff, a marathon bomb, is found guilty, given a death sentence, and this dumb moron... A U.S. attorney gets up and says, make no mistake about it. It had nothing to do with Muslims, and he's not a Muslim. That's an insult to him and to his religion, by the way, because he believes he was a holy warrior committing jihad. I don't like that she insulted him and stole his, his religion from him. As a matter of fact, if he's a holy warrior, he probably should be given an interview on ABC by George Stephanopoulos so he can talk about the wonders of Islam and how he sees the world. I'm sure that George uh, Staphylococcus is the, per per the, f the perfect person to do that job. All right, you got the picture. I'm worked up. The phone number is 855 400 Did they give such a statement about Timothy McVeigh? 
that he wasn't really a Christian, he didn't do it in the name of Christianity? I don't think so. How in the world can you not see what's going on? What is this crime? Todd on WDRC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Dr. Savage. Thank you for having me on. Um, I, I'd like to disagree with you slightly on, on part of your attack on the DA in that I believe the first part of her statement is somewhat true in that it was a political crime. As you know, the Chechnyan region where these two gentlemen uh, originated from. Well, hold on. Let me, take your, let me take your statements as they come. So you're saying Sonov's crime was a political crime, not a religious crime? Partially. Uh, okay, wait, wait. So then partially you would admit that Islam is not a religion. It's a political movement. One could interpret it as such, but it's clearly a well, religion. Some have said that Islam is not a religion. It's a political movement disguised as a religion. I have read that. So by your statement, you're agreeing that in part that's true. You could, one could say that, yes. All right, so now let's hear the rest of your analysis. Yep. It's just that, as you're aware, the Chechen region has been uh, controlled by the Russian Empire going back to the 1800s, um, and they've been battling for independence. And up until recently, religion wasn't a primary vehicle in which they used to cite their independence or try to gain independence from Russia. So this Chechnyan blew up the Boston Marathon race because of something in Chechnya? How does that work? They, they claim, um, you know, part of their hatred for America is because of our support for uh, the Russian... Uh, oh, now we're supporting Russia? The last I read, we're at war with Russia, according to Obama. We, we read that, 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 that Putin's our worst enemy and, he, and he's Hitler. See, radical Muslims want to trick you any way they can. They'll tell you it's for, for the oppression of the Chechnyans. Then they'll tell you it's for the oppression of Muslims in the Middle East. They always have an excuse for it. So how come they're at war all over the world with people? They always have an excuse for going to war, don't they? They seem to recently, yes. They're at war in the Philippines with the Catholics of the Philippines. What's their excuse for that? You, you got some, insult, some insult against someone selling fish? In 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 the, in the Philippines, I mean, there's always a reason to go to war. India, why are the Muslims at war with the Hindus? Again, what an insult from 1409. Your point. I'm well, I'm sorry. I I don't I don't buy that Sonoff had a political justification for his bombing. I'm not saying you're justifying what he did, but you're saying rationalizing in his mind why he blew up the Boston bomb. No, he's a sick piece of garbage who's used his religion to express his hatred for humanity. In that regard, no, he's not a Muslim. He's a sick human being, and he should have been put off the earth. He never should have been born. He should have been aborted as far as I'm concerned. But he was born. He wasn't aborted. And now he blew up a thing which killed a number of people and maimed others. And he got what he deserved. Unfortunately, the same liberals who are apologizing for Islam will keep him alive for 50 years. That's the real disgusting truth. And by the way, when Timothy McVeigh was put to death, I didn't hear the U.S. attorney get up and say he doesn't speak for all white males. It seems like they condemned the entire white male uh, population with Timothy McVeigh. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The trial of this case has showcased an important American ideal that even the worst of the worst deserve a fair trial oh, and due process of law. Today the jury has spoken and Joe Harsanayev yeah. will pay with his life for his crimes. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Make no mistake, the defendant claimed to be acting on behalf of all Muslims. This was not a religious crime and oh, it certainly does not reflect true Muslim beliefs. How do you know? What are you, an expert? What is she, a Muslim? That's a product of what we're getting in law schools today. That's the U.S. attorney for the District of Massachusetts common MRTs. And we're supposed to sit here and worship her because she's the first woman Hispanic to represent Massachusetts as U.S. attorney. I don't care who it would be as long as they had intelligence. This one is not intelligent, number one. And number two, she's doing a disservice both to the American people and to the individual who's just found guilty, incidentally, because she's spreading propaganda. It's a complete lie. What do you mean? He said he did it in the name of Muslims and you're telling us he didn't? How would you know it's in his heart, Carmen? And you listen to the rhetoric she uses, this little uh, hallmark speech. This is a day in the name of America. But you know something? I'm running a, 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 an essay contest for college students. If someone submitted an essay like this to me, I would disqualify it immediately as being hackneyed.
and beneath the level of a seventh grader. And that's what passes now for a lawyer at this level, no less. Okay, let's hear what you have to say. KYYA Radio. John, what do you say about this? Him not being a Muslim. I mean, how do you feel about Carmen Ortiz apologizing for Islam like this? It's ridiculous. Every time I hear a politician or a lawyer try to defend after a heinous crime has been committed, they always try to say it does not represent the true Muslim beliefs or does not teach Muslim, uh, uh, true Muslim teaching. Well, what does? They never say, what does the Muslim religion teach? What do they believe? It's exactly what it teaches, radical or not. That doesn't teach love one another, turn the other cheek, like you've mentioned a thousand times. It's exactly what it represents. That's right. Christianity is based upon love thy neighbor as thyself and turn thy other cheek. That is the chief tenet of Christianity. That is not the chief tenet of Islam. If you read the Quran, there are 113 mentions of war, holy war against people who are not like them. It's in their holy book. It's ingrained in their holy book. It's drilled into their stupid heads from the time they're a child. And it's time for America to wake up to the danger we're in, no matter what these dunces tell us. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca for one reason, because the dialogue in this novel explains exactly what I just said in writing. And if I'm wrong, if someone could prove me wrong, I'll give you $10,000. Show me that it does not say that 110 times. Okay, it's in there. It's in there. It's in there. And I'm sick of it. That's all. Now, here's another call. Listen to this. This is a great caller coming up. Line number five, John. G, I can't read the, the number here because the uh, thing got in the way. John, welcome to the Savage Nation. What station are you listening to? Thank you. Uh, I just want to say I'm absolutely disgusted that the same liberals like this DA, Obama, etc., could tell me that these uh, people are not Muslims. They put my tax dollars to use to ensure that bin Laden was afforded a Muslim burial, that mm. this Boston bomber probably gets his, uh, his prayer rug, the Quranic diet, etc., if they're not That's right, and he's going to get halal meals in prison. What does that prove? He's not a Muslim. Yeah, he's he's going to get he's going to get uh, uh, halal meals. He'll get a prayer rug. He'll get an imam coming in as sure as I'm sitting here. So, what does that prove? He's not a Muslim. Well, these people are saying that they're not Muslims. So then, why are we bending over backwards to treat them as? No, no, wait. The, the but the, ki the the murderer Sarnoff said he is a Muslim. So she bent over backwards to say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You hear this? So wait a minute. So she's saying basically that he's uh, mentally disturbed. And what she, maybe she should disqualify the, the verdict and say that it's owing to insanity. And what, she's going to nullify the verdict? Because he says he's a Muslim. She says he isn't. So by definition, he's crazy. Maybe she, he, she should overturn the verdict already, John. Yeah, I'll read you a page of the dialogue. Page 37, Countdown to Mecca, where the generals are planning their plot. And one looks at the other and he says, the Quran, sir, uh, Morton replied, verse 812, just one of the more than 100 verses that call Muslims to war with what they call non-believers. And who do they call non-believers, Brooks asked. Quote, anyone who isn't Muslim, Reynolds interrupted. Quran 551 states that Muslims are not to take Jews and the Christians for friends. Allah describes them as unjust people, close quote. The Quran invokes kill the infidel 120 times, General Brooks said quietly, almost to himself. What kind of sane nation permits these people to practice such open hatred? That's a dialogue in a fictionalized story in a novel called Countdown to Mecca. How sadly it is true, though, that these are quotes from their holy book. And it's long overdue that we had a healthy adult conversation before we are all dead. It's that simple. No nation on earth can survive an infiltration like this unless there is a reformation within the Islamic religion as there has been within the Christian religion. They will never change their ways. At least some of them won't, as we can see with Mr. Tsarnoff. And every other day they're arresting another cell here and a cell there, here a cell, there a cell, everywhere a cell, cell. Where are they getting this poison from? Mary's nursery rhymes, they're getting it from their holy book. They're getting it from their imam. That's where they're getting it from. Where the hell do you think they're getting it from? I have nothing more to add. I'm not going to listen to these excuses anymore. It's nonsense. It's sickening. 
Craig W. B. M. Q. He's also outraged by this attorney, uh, Carmen Ortiz. Listen, go ahead, please. Well, you know, had uh, Farnoff been a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Christian who had uh, done this in the name of Jesus, I don't believe any of Obama's goons would have been very quick to defend him or defend their Christianity. Uh, we both. Well, you, yes, but you don't have to go that far. In the recent incident with the cops, did that? Did that? Uh, the state attorney there, Marilyn Moron Mosby, did she get up and say anything good about police and say they don't represent all police? even though they really didn't commit a crime. But put that aside, she could have said, these six officers will be tried and this and that, but they don't in any way represent all police in Baltimore or anywhere else. Did she say that, Marilyn Moron Mosby? No, she did not. She used her persecution of six innocent police to smear the entire police force, not only in Boston, but around America. Why? Because she got her marching orders from Al Sharpton and Barack Obama. That's why. In plain English, my opinion, you don't like it, go listen to Vivaldi on NPR. KKOB Radio. Alan, welcome to the Savage Nation. Michael, it's a pleasure. Um, I think it's, a, like you say, it's a disservice to say that these uh, bombers were not Muslim because they claimed it. I would suggest that they are not only Muslim, they are devout Muslims because they are following the teachings of Muhammad. They are not we're operating in the teachings of Muhammad. They are devout. I, I won't argue with you. I, that's exactly what he presented at the trial. He himself said he's a Muslim. So why did the first Hispanic and first woman uh, appointed by Obama as U.S. attorney for District of Mass, why did she have to bend over backwards and apologize for Islam? Why? Because her uh, political correctness is the soma of this brave new world. As long as people think they're safe, that this is not going to happen to them, they will accept anything. I, oh, I see, you've I see you've read your Huxley, Soma of the Brave New World. I like that, my friend. Yeah, I haven't read the book, but I saw the movie. Oh, I love it. The Soma of the, uh, of the, of the Brave New World that we live in. Well, I'm going to give you the Soma of our, our time, Michael Savage's Countdown to Mecca. 855-407-282 is uh, the phone number. W, I'm sorry, KBOI Radio. Melinda, go ahead, please. How do you feel about this uh, judgment by the U.S. attorney that he's not a Muslim? Oh, I just think that that is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely, completely ridiculous, but I'm not surprised. That's the way things are these days. Um, what I wanted to tell you is that don't lose heart because this kid is going to be in prison and he is a very pretty young boy. Yeah, but he's going to be protected more so than most. Uh, you know, he's, who, he's too high profile to be raped in prison. By, by the way, and, and I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. I don't think that that's the, the mark of justice in a jail cell, incidentally. I don't think it should happen to anybody, except to people who hurt children. Nothing bad should be held back from people who hurt children in a prison, as far as I'm concerned. They should tear them apart like animals. You, you want my opinion? Anyone who hurts a little child like that, what they do to these kids, you see the, the porno that that guy had in San Francisco, worked for the mayor, the advisor, the Democrat, the kind of scenes of little boys tied to a chair being hurt by men. Believe me, there's no pain in, that could be inflicted on him that would be too much for me. That's how I feel. That's all. Leave that damn children alone, for God's sakes. What kind of society is this? KSFO, Jim, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, Savage. You know, for the people that say that violence by Muslims is only recent, you tell me one century since Muhammad that they have not engaged in acts of genocide, mass genocide, against uh, in some geographical area of the world. You know, the Armenian genocide, uh, the, you know, the siege of Vienna when they tried to march on. Yes, the first genocide was against the Jews in the, in the area. That's the first one that Muhammad ordered his soldiers to commit against Jewish tribes in the area. That's a fact of, of biblical history. But you're right, through the ages there is still a, 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 a record exactly what you just said. And the greatest offense is the truth. If this was not true, I would not have permitted the call on the air. And I defy anyone listening to prove that call a false, because I do not believe he is false. And I am sick and tired of this cover-up and this justification by the president on down through his minions like this U.S. attorney. It's that simple. This is a nonsensical story. Listen to it again. Here's Carmen Ortiz, after announcing the death penalty for Tsarnoff, the Boston Marathon bomber, listen to the justification she gives for his religion. 
The trial of this case has showcased an important American ideal that even the worst of the worst deserve a fair trial and due process of law. Today the jury has spoken and Joe Harsanayev will pay with his life for his crimes. Make no mistake, the defendant claimed to be acting on behalf of all Muslims. This was not a religious crime and it certainly does not reflect true Muslim beliefs. How would she know? She's denying him his own religious beliefs. He said he did it in the name of Islam. He never said he didn't. Did he retract that? Maybe I'm mistaken, Robert. Somewhere in this trial, did Mr. Tsarnoff retract the statement that it was done in the name of Islam for insults against his religion? I don't recall that. And if I am mistaken, then I apologize in advance. I do not see any record in the transcripts of the trial in the news media by Tsarnoff where, oh, he said retracted that. He said, I'm sorry, I didn't do it in the name of Islam. He, he did it from day one in the name of Islam. And then we're told that in 50 states or 49 states, we have Muslims waiting to strike. They didn't say Christians ready to strike. They didn't say Hindus in 50 states ready to strike. They didn't say Jews with bombs ready to strike. They said sleeper cells, Islamic extremists. Who are they doing it for? In what name are they ready to strike? In the name of Jesus? In the name of Abraham? In the name of Moses? No, in the name of Allah. So unless you awaken to the enemy within, you, my friends, are going to go down with the rest of us because I'll tell you something that you may not know. Maybe you didn't learn it in the uh, PC kindergarten you went to, but a bomb does not discriminate between liberals and conservatives. It does not discriminate between gay and straight, black and white, Hispanic or Asian. A bomb hurts everyone equally. And if we've got mad bombers in 50 states ready to strike, uh, according to the FBI, I have one question for the great FBI. Why don't you go tear them out of their, their, their hell holes and put them in jail preemptively instead of waiting for them to kill us? And on that note, I'll take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hot Talk 560 KSFO. Astonishing exhibition of propaganda. Barack Obama's U.S. attorney for Boston said that the Boston Marathon bomber did not do it for all Muslims. Well, I want to remind all of my listeners that the Boston bomber's mom said the opposite. She gave a diatribe where she said Americans can burn in hell. She went on. Sarnoff's mother screamed and yelled after her son was found guilty. And back then, the mother of this terrorist said the following. She said, the United States will pay for my sons and the sons of Islam permanently. Why don't you tell Mrs. Sonoff that her son is not a Muslim? She then wrote the following. She said, my sons are innocent, as innocent as all those who are being killed by your country. And she went on. She pledged this to all of you good liberals. She said, today they are killing Muslims and tomorrow will come your turn. And he who doubts this is deeply mistaken, said the Boston Marathon bomber's fanatical Muslim mother. And she went on and on and on. She said that Israel and the government of America are in equal proportions. Again, she got in her Jew hatred. And again, she said she is a Muslim. And she said that we will pay for it. We'll pay for it, she said, quote, Today they are killing Muslims, and tomorrow will come your turn, she went on. And they will pay for my sons and the sons of Islam, said Mrs. Bomber. Permanently, the tears of their mothers will be fuel for them in hell, and also their blood, said Mrs. Bomber's uh, Mrs. Bomber. And on and on it goes, and yet we're told by Obama's affirmative action U.S. attorney, well, why don't you listen again, and you listen to the double talk and the propaganda and the double speak that we were warned about by George Orwell, that is becoming truer every day on the Barack Double Talk Obama. Listen. The trial of this case has showcased an important American ideal 
that even the worst of the worst deserve a fair trial and due process of law. Yeah, right. Today right, the right. jury has spoken. Right, and right, Joe right. Harsanayev will pay with his life for his crimes. Make no mistake, the defendant claimed to be acting yeah, on yeah, behalf yeah, yeah, yeah. of all Muslims. This right, was right. not a religious crime. No, and no, it certainly no. does not reflect true Muslim beliefs. How do you know? The mother, Mrs. Balmer, would disagree with you. The mother screamed it's for the sons of Islam, and we're going to pay for it permanently. And this little dunce here that they found from some 10th rate law school, I mean, a U.S. attorney in charge of 300 lawyers. Can you believe the country you're living in? What Obama's stuffing the courts with? Oh, my God, what tomorrow will bring. We're going to pay forever for what this man is doing to the nation. God bless America. Stay strong. Thank you for your listenership.